what's up everybody we are back with another video and i'm gonna go ahead and show y'all my colors but i just want to say that i could not not give y'all this tutorial because i'm still in love with these nails and usually i resell my press-ons or i just like throw them in a bin but these are gonna be kept okay so just starting off we want to kind of um create like this encapsulated beautiful nail so we're gonna start off with the color 180 from dynamic nails and we're just gonna do a little bitty piece at the bottom and you kind of want to like square it off at the end and a little trick to doing this is making sure your bead is a little bit more dry than what it will usually be because you are uh, kind of molding this you really this is not like a regular bead where you're like trying to make it blend and be super smooth like you're molding that so you want that to be like on a different level of dry and that's pretty much how your nail should look we're going to place that to the side and we're going to begin to work on our middle finger so for the middle finger we're going to have a nice big flower so you're going to do an ombre but the ombre doesn't even have to be perfect when you're doing stuff like this save yourself the time because ombres already take long enough you want to go in with a decent amount of thickness. Um, I've had a couple people say like they like my acrylic press-ons because they can tell that they're acrylic from the thickness. So depending on like the client that you have, that's how you want to work. With me personally, I like thicker um, nails in general. So I'm going to always go with a fair amount of acrylic. So when I'm going in with my second color, I really just like to take my time and work in small amounts, especially because this is a darker color. When you are dealing with brown and black, you kind of want to take your time with that ombre. That's not an ombre you could just throw on and be like, oh, I did that in like one or two swipes. Also, like I already said, you really don't have to do this perfect because there's literally going to be a giant flower on top of this specific nail. When you're working with press-ons, you can be a bit more sloppy um, because it doesn't like, I don't know, it's just not the same. You know, um, I go a little bit thicker when I'm doing actual nails because... It's a person. But with press-ons, you want to save a little bit of product. But still, like I said, you want that thickness. And especially right here, you want to put just a little bit because you can really make that nail shrink. And then that person won't be able to fit the nail. So when you do the very bottom, like the cuticle area of a press-on nail, try to go in thin. And then we're going to drill over that anyway. I'm going to show you that later. So for this pinky nail, we're just going to go in with brown and we're going to do this a nice little thickness because I really don't want to have to encapsulate this nail in clear. When it comes to my press on nails, I will get lazy when that when it's my hand um, because I put in enough work for my press on clients. So when it comes to stuff like this, I'll just do the color like actually thick and then excuse me not gonna lie i'm really ready to slap the hell out of these people because they do this all the time like why are you revving up your car down the street at six o'clock in the morning anyways moving on because they they made me lose my focus we're gonna go in with our thumbnail and this is also gonna be an ombre and then the other thumbnail is gonna be an ombre in orange <clears throat> but it's gonna pretty much be the same base color but now like for real i low-key want to fight them <laughs> I low-key like they oh my god y'all like and they do this all the time and these kids down the street and it's like like the kids in my neighborhood they actually play in the street like you know like they play basketball and you know like they run back and forth because they are friends and these people do this all the time it's like I don't know if you're trying to show out or what like they'll like zoom down the street and it's like dude this is a neighborhood anyway Let's get back to this video if I really pop off on these people this morning. So for this part, you're going to go in with that blue glitter. And remember I told you we're pretty much like building a nail that we're going to end up encapsulating. So you technically don't have to go on this thick with the blue. But I don't know. I just picked up a lot. So I just kept it going. But um, after that, if you want to, you can add like little glitter pieces. I decided to go in with hearts on top of that blue to kind of just make it look like it's floating on top of something i think this is fake it's like super 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 cool but yeah after that you're gonna uh, go ahead and bake it for 30 seconds or 60 seconds depending on your lamp now i'm just showing y'all my colors that i chose to go in with most colors are dynamic nails or um D, D. but that dark brown is actually a color i got off of shein so I kind of want to get it again because I really, really like it. It's like this beautiful chocolate color. 
So this is pretty much our marble nail, if you can't tell yet, <laughs> because I did not announce it. But this is the marble nail. So this is just personally how I do my quick marble. I don't even care in between, y'all. I just kind of like put my brush in the acetone, wipe it on the napkin, and grab the next color, smear it around a little bit, grab the next color, smear it around a little bit, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to lie, y'all. I was loving this just color combo. And I wish I can come up with color combos like this all the time. But this actually just matched the dress that I was wearing that day. So I was able to like kind of like put those colors together blindly. But if I could do this every day, I would. Because <laughs> I love marble nails. But on another note, y'all, I am definitely trying my hardest to go viral. So... I'm trying to post for 45 days. If y'all don't see me on here for 45 days straight, check on me and be like, Lyric, I'm not playing with you. You need to be making content today. I'm I'm for real. I'm, I'm going to do the whole post three times a day, every day, 45 days and see how it go for me. If it don't go well, I'm going to still post the videos or whatever, but I'm going to focus more on the clients that I have, you know, or whatever, instead of social media so much, because it can be a lot. So... The goal is to at least get to a thousand followers at the least within these next 45 days. So make sure y'all sharing my videos and supporting me and stuff. Okay, anyway, back to the video. So what y'all saw me do was drill down a nail because we don't want the nail to be too, too thick, right? So also I went on top with some transfer gel and I'm going to put that down in the description box. That's how I do my gold foils. I put the transfer gel, cure it, and then put the foils on top. And after you get the foil on top, you want to put it in the lamp for about 60 seconds, take it out, top coat it, and then you can start encapsulating with this clear the way you see me doing. I am still not a master with clear because I don't know if it's like the brands that I buy, but I feel like this clear is like way too thick and it dries really, really fast. But then the one from Dynamic, I feel like is a little bit too loose and it dries too slow. So if you know the perfect clear acrylic, please place me a link down below or inbox me who has the best acrylic that has like the perfect dry time, the perfect thickness or whatever like that. Because what happens with this kind of clear all the time is I end up having to, I'm talking about super drill my nails because the clear is so, so, so thick. And if you've made it this far in the video, comment down below how much you would pay for a nail set like this. I would really love to know. I really want to get to know my followers. Um, I do appreciate everybody's support that I've gotten so far. I do have children, so, like, the whole going live thing might not be the best idea for me <laughs> because I don't want nobody to be like, oh, she's yelling at her kids. Yes, my kids, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a, a toddler and a seven-year-old and a newborn. So I don't know about going live just yet, but I really wish my kids were older because I definitely will. I definitely would. But um, anyway, this is what I was talking about when I was talking about the clear being super thick. So you see how I'm having a like super drill over here, which is difficult when it comes to press ons because they don't be still. They want to get they want to get pow pow. They want to get whooping. But no, seriously, they don't want to be still. They they fall off the little um handles. Yeah, so it's not the easiest thing to do. So just know I'll be putting in work when it comes to your orders. Anyway, let's go over to this pinky. So for the pinky, we're going to go on top of it with some blooming gel. And I'm going to also put that in the description for y'all. And then on top of the wet blooming gel, wet guys, you're going to put a color. And that's how we're going to get an airbrush effect. Blooming gel makes the polish spread. So it's pretty much going to spread on its own. But I do want to show y'all this trick just in case you want it to blend a little bit more. So you're going to put your brush in some acetone, let it flare out a little bit, and then you're going to tap, tap, tap all around the edges of it, and that's going to give it a smoother blend. Now we're going to go back to that middle finger that we unbraided. We're going to top coat it. Mind you, everything was encapsulated and clear. So I'm just letting y'all know that <laughs> before y'all be like, wait a minute, she only encapsulated one nail. The only nail that wasn't encapsulated was the pinky. Okay, guys? Anyway, for this flower... So I kind of wanted to get in detail on how to do this flower. So here we go. So for this flower, I am using a bigger brush. I want to say it's a size 6 or 8. I don't remember. Um, I'll put it down in the description uh, <laughs> after this. So with this flower, you want to place down your bead. And you want to pretty much drag it to the length you want it to be. And this is just how I do it. Drag and pat, drag and pat. 
and then I fix it around the edges and that is how I get um, the flower shape and of course I'm gonna show y'all again so don't worry about that um, but yeah going in the middle is like kind of important for this flower because you're gonna put an even smaller flower on the inside of this one So getting a little bit more into detail about this flower, you're going to place it in the monomer. Just tap it off a couple of times from the monomer and then tap it into your acrylic because you want this to be a bigger flower. Notice how I'm letting that acrylic bead sit on my brush for a while because you want this bead to be kind of dry. And you're going to tap it on the napkin a little bit and then place it down on a nail and let it sit for a couple of seconds. Now this video is in real time so I'm just letting y'all know I did put a little acetone in my monomer. So the first thing you want to do is put your brush in there long ways and then you're going to kind of like bring down that petal bring it down bring it down bring it down and pat it in the middle and when you want to make it more wide you're going to literally push your brush to the side if that makes sense and that's going to spread out your flower to get the petal shape you're going to like um go on the sides and push it in on the sides only and drag it up while you're pushing it in I know that sounds crazy, but that's just my best way of explaining it. I'm not the best with explaining flowers. I've been told y'all this. So for the smaller flowers, you're going to pretty much do the same thing. You want to place down your bead, let it sit for a couple of seconds. And if you pretty much got the hang of it, you can go ahead and go in with your other petal as well. That way, you know, by the time you're done placing down that petal, it'll be time to work on the other one. Once your bead starts to polymerize, you want to kind of just go down and press right in the middle and spread it out. And then, of course, like... You want to work on your shape and stuff like that because sometimes the acrylic will kind of like start to like slide down the nail and glide. <laughs> so just make sure you, um, you know, you are the master of the acrylic. Don't let the acrylic be the master of you. Okay. So when your acrylic starts trying to like slide down the nail or whatever, just make sure you kind of fix it really fast. Go back and reshape it. And sometimes when your acrylic isn't drying fast enough, you'll have that issue. But that's what the acetone and the monomer is for. And as you can see here, I ended up adding just a little bit more so my petal could be bigger because they was not matching. They was two different size tits, okay? <laughs> but no, they wasn't matching. So I just went in and fixed it a little bit. So for the flower inside of the other flower, you want to go in with a smaller bead and you're going to do the same thing that you did for that first flower petal. Um, you're going to start in the middle and then you're going to kind of drag it up but not as much and then you're going to fix the sides and that's how you got the smaller flower in the middle. Now this part is super important. I wanted to show y'all what happens when you don't buff the nail. Look at this. Such a beautiful marble went to waste. So I'm going to come back in and I'm going to buff the nail and show y'all the difference in how the nail is going to look after buffing. Now look how good this looks. 
do y'all see the difference? The lighting and everything is the same. Buff those nails, y'all. I used to try to skip this step thinking that I was doing something, but it really, really will make you look like you wasted a whole acrylic application if you skip the buffing step. And for this next part, y'all please don't yell at me. I'm showing y'all the zebra print, but I definitely did not get the um, rhinestones on recording. And I'm kind of disappointed because I've never done the bigger rhinestones on camera. So, yeah, I'm so sorry about that, y'all. But I had to go through my phone and fix some storage issues or whatever like that. So, I apologize. Again, I didn't get any of the bling. I didn't even get the bling that I put on top of the flowers. I just, this is literally like the last part that I got was the rose. I'm going to let y'all watch the rose, and hopefully y'all can kind of get the bling placement based off my pictures. If not, there will be other times that I do flowers and stuff like that, and I'll kind of do something similar. I really want to take this nail and do an entire set like this, so I'm going to order some more um, rhinestones, and I want to do like an entire zebra print set with like roses and flowers and bling. Since this is the last set, I'm going to go ahead and let y'all watch this in peace. And y'all make sure y'all subscribe, hit the bell notifications. I am really trying to interact with y'all. I need y'all for this 45 days. I really do. That's how me and my daughter talk when we fake cry. We're like, I'm really, really sad. I'm really sad. Y'all got to hear my daughter do it. It's so funny. She's like, mommy, I don't know what to do with myself. She's like seven too, so it just makes it more funny. But no, okay. So make sure y'all subscribe. Make sure y'all go to my Instagram, shop my new website. Let me know what y'all think. And if y'all need any help doing the custom orders, I will also place my business phone number down below so y'all can contact me directly.